Hello everyone, here we are on our next job and it's a lovely November morning, nice and crisp but it's dry, that's how we like it. So here we're doing a, a Tegula driveway, Marshall's Tegula with the Argent border which is like a lighter colour which will contrast the charcoal for the main body of the driveway. So all this waste you see in the front here, this is from the back because we're doing the back at the same time. So we're nearly finished there, so now we're moving on to the front. So today we're going to be digging this out. Uh, getting it all away and then we've got the stone coming tomorrow so I've got a little uh, pattern planned for this so it's not just straightforward in lines so keep watching you'll see what we do with it area we've got the crust off the top we've put a load over there so now we can actually see what we're working with so i've set this line up which you can see there on that corner and you should always be for those who don't know two courses below your damp roof course which is what we are there so i've got that height there and i've brought it through see the line to the garage height so all this area from this point here is going to be falling back towards this garage so what we're going to do here is put an eco drain in there and then run it around a little bit turn back to this corner so that that the eco will be falling back whereas all this paving will be going this way so now we've got that line in there then now we can work out our depth what we need so we're looking for 250 below our finished height so we'll leave that in now and we'll bring the machine back in and we'll just grade this back and I'll dip the tape, check it's right, and bring the level across and work it back. And then from that point, we're all falling out towards the front drive. So we'll take another line from there. Once all this crust has gone off the top, we'll take a line from this point out to the front and we'll do the same process again. it now the last grab going away been a nice day makes it so much easier when the weather's like this
day so last week I was off found out I uh, had coronavirus so I wasn't the best it wasn't too bad but obviously I had to isolate so the lads did some work finishing off in the back and a few other little jobs that we needed to finish off I didn't want them to go too too much on the front uh, we had 20 tonne of stone booked in which they moved around by hand they had used to them in the day backed it all and Craig's rebuilt the pillar so back on it now and getting things set up putting some curbs in today and the lads are digging out for a soakway feels good to be back okay we're just putting these curbs in now so we've got our string line from our height finished height up here this is on this course through to this end and then we've set all these in at the right height and the right radius round so we're just going to join them up now pointing them as we go with some mix the craig's kindly made up and that's going to form a bed there for that side and then we've got a nice little plat 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 pla <laughs> pattern plans <laughs> easy for you to say lad i'm buzzing <laughs> let's drink up your death look like big fun come on let's get it on like that i'm fin gay so i'm stunning you love it come on give me something i know that you want it come on give me something the night is young and so as in the bubble on the level I'm looking underneath to keep them running through to hit this point so I'm not concerned of what this level is doing because that'll change as the radius comes around I'm simply trying to join up the tops of the blocks so it hits this point when I get there the night is young, so let's have some fun If you love me
So now all the kerbs are in, just gonna back them up now with a nice strong concrete mix. Stop them moving this way. You know that I'm the queen of overthinking. It's like we're done before we even started. To the step now so we're going to do a semicircular step to work hold these arches on the door so i'm going to be forming them with key, key curbs now but if you just look at the size of the the gaps there I'm not having that even though we're going to point it so what we're going to have to do is cut every, every other one down to a taper to lessen this joint here because i want 10 mil max on that, so I'm going to be cutting those down and then I'll put them in. Okay, so I'll just explain what we're doing here. We are putting uh, an echo across the front here to catch the water, to divert it back and drain it within the property. The reason why we're doing that, because a law come in in 2007, where basically it's to stop or help prevent all the flooding that's going on around the country. So the idea is the water that lands 
within your property, anything over five metres, it should be draining into the ground below. So it doesn't apply to like anything permeable like gravel or permeable block or resin, as long as it's got a permeable base and the water can go through. So because we're blocking this, we're catching the water and putting it into the soak away. So we've got these attenuation cells here. So they're better than just filling the hole with gravel because they're going to hold a bigger capacity. So we're going to be wrapping those in Teram, joining them together, wrapping them in Teram. Uh, and then the pipe will be going into one of these inlets here from the echo. And then this pit that we've dug here, we're going to be lining that as well with Teram. Put those crates in and then backfill it with gravel. And then that's it. So everything that lands on here will be going into there and drain away. We've done a little test and the water is getting away, so... Right, so it's all backfilled with stone, we've rolled the terram over the top. And we're just going to put an extra layer right over it. Before we stone off. There we go. Oh, nice couple of rosy lee there. That's quite good on the colour chart. Maybe one shade darker would be perfect. Nice biscuits as well. What have we got here? We have got fig roll. Mm, five out of ten. Malted milk. Six out of ten. Jammy dodges. Mm, nine out of ten, maybe. And these ginger nuts. Oh. 10 out of 10 for them bad boys. Mmm! Mmm! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're just chopping our stone levels up now. So we've got a line in here at our finished height. And then it's going to kick at this point where the house is. So I'll set that there, that block at the right height, and then the line kicks down again to meet the threshold. So we're just bringing our stone up to the right height now before we roll with it. Okay, so there's four things going on right now. We've got a man on the roller doing the main areas, someone on the whacker going around the edges, hard to reach areas, and then right up against the building and edges, we've got someone on a hand tamper while also keeping the surface damp and moist so we get maximum compaction.
okay, so something I sh forgot to show you at the time. I've also put these echoes in here, which we said we were going to do, because everything from this point here is falling back this way. So, uh, quite handy to have a gully there, so I've just ran it into that. So, I whacked everything down yesterday and I'm ready to start laying today. Just going to set these. So, well, need another whack there. Just going to set these screed rails in and then start screeding. Let's go. So, I've got the line set up now. And that represents the finished height of the driveway. So I'm just setting my screed rails in now onto the onto the base, onto the stone base, and I'm using the block as a as a guide for the depth. So when I'm putting that block on the screed rail, it should be coming flush with the top of the line. So I'm just taking it down wherever it needs it so it sits flush. Then the purpose of the sand. It's just to nestle it in place so it doesn't move while we're compacting and moving the grit in. set up this area now so that block there sitting on the screed rail represents our finished height so i've brought the level through onto that block and then i've got the line running from that block down to the echo that end it's important any anyone who doesn't know most people will if the pavers 
yeah, to prop up your line higher than any fixed edge that's in. So I've just got a pair of scissors there. Take it up about five, six mil to allow for compaction. If you set it into that height and you whack it, it's going to be below the finished edge there. So that that's our height there, that line running through. So I've just set this screed rail in to the right height. Use the block to just go along, engage it right with the line so it sits flush with the line right the way down. So now I'm going to be doing the same on this side. I'll run the line from there onto that block which is again level across and then from that point there it's going to kick down to meet the echo at the front same principle Okay, so it's important when you're laying block just to check you're keeping square and running through in the line, especially here where the pattern's fanning out and going wide. It has a tendency to start curling back in as you go because the nibs, you, lo you, don't, you lose your nibs on the contact with the block, so it tends to curl back. So I've got that line there square with the house right through, so I'm just checking that that is through right the way through and there he fell over <laughs> which it is so like every few meters i sight it through or check it with the line if it looks out straighten them up so it's a birthday decision dominoes for the boys what are we saying there's the birthday boy there yeah, I can't point the wrong way there. The cold, not the cold. You enjoying that, Jake? Amazing. Try to go
Yeah, her love can make a person hazy Praying she won't break me down Happy birthday, Matty lad! Thanks, mate. Wow, that's very kind. You gotta sing. Oh, Cheers, mate. Happy birthday for yesterday. Thanks. <laughs> that was good. So thoughtful. So now we're all cut in on this circle. What I'm going to do is remove all the stone and then I'll be bedding these on a semi dynamix. Reason is it's an unretained edge, so it's not going up against the wall or anything like that. So you don't want any lateral movements. So I'll be digging this out and then putting them on the semi dynamix and then the horn chuck the back.
it's okay. Before you whack it, it's important to go round and just check there's no stone on the top or any bits of gravel or anything like that. Because if you whack it and that's on it, it's gonna scratch the surface. Not too bad on a block like this, which is a like a, a rumbled finish, but if you've got like a drive iron 50 or something and it's gonna put a big scratch in it, it's not good. So you always get a bit of stone on the top from just doing the cutting process and and the, and the screening like yeah there there's a bit there so get, get the brush on it brush it off or like a blower clean it all off and also it's important as, as well to check that you've got no like cracked or chip block because once that sands in and you've whacked it you're going to struggle to get them out again so let, quick check over check check the safety is clear and then get the sand spread out can't finish properly because I've had a few showers so I'll have to come back on another day and just check the sands alright, top it up if we need to but it's basically in there, it's been whacked into the joints and the light, although it doesn't look like on camera, the light's fading as well now but yeah, really happy with the way it's gone this drive very, very nice Folks, there we are, all done. Hope you liked the video. Uh, you enjoy doing this job. Really happy with the finish. Thanks for watching.